Good morning, dear friends. It is so nice to be with you again this morning. Uh, for these few minutes of, uh, of uh, meditation on God's word. God is faithful in his faithfulness and mercy. He has given us another new day. And he who has given us a new day also has released already towards us everything that is needed that we may live a good and a fruitful happy life for the glory of God. And so let us meditate for a brief, uh, for, a, for a few minutes. Uh, today's meditation is uh, taken from Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. If you read this passage, you will understand one thing. God has a two palaces to live or two dwelling places. Two important truths about God are shown here in this passage in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. Uh, number one, exceeding greatness of God. That is number one truth about God. And number two, he also is the hope of the humble in regard to him. And that means he lives in the highest and the most lofty or holy place. He also lives in the broken hearted, contrite spirited people. God is pictured here as the one who inhabits eternity and at the same time the humble and the contrite. Greatness of this God, that is what we are going to think to begin with. His greatness can be measured in three things. Number one, by the duration of his existence. How long he has been existing. His greatness of this God. You begin to measure. Can you ever be able, will you be able to measure his greatness? And uh, we can understand a little bit about his greatness by three things. Number one, by duration of his existence. It says here in this passage in Isaiah, he inhabits eternity, says here. He inhabits everlasting time. He is from eternity or everlasting to everlasting. He is called the ancient of days. In the book of Daniel chapter uh, 7 verse 9 and verse 13 and verse 22. There are three verses in that one chapter in Daniel. He read about, we read about uh, he is the ancient of days. Now these expressions are used to impress on us that he has no beginning and end. He is from eternity to eternity. And the second way you can measure his greatness is by his position in the universe. What is his position in the universe? He is the high and lofty one. King of kings and lord of lords. He is the creator, the ruler, the protector, the provider, and the sustainer. In his majesty and authority, he is far removed above the highest, far removed above the mightiest of his creatures. Before there was a sky or sea, or stars and planets or sun or moon before there was a mountain or valleys 
rivers before there was time or space he was and when there shall be no more sky no more stars or seas no more sun or moon and no more uh, mountains and valleys or rivers when there shall be no more devil and time shall be no more god will still be there and he is there in above all dominions and powers or demons or devil himself god will still be the sovereign god who sustains all of his creation and one thing about this god is he is not only really created all these both visible and invisible things in creation he does not to leave them to themselves he takes care by the power of his word he brought forth everything into existence by the same power of his word he sustains also all his creations that is why we sing what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve heaven and earth adore him and angels bow before him what a mighty god we serve and my friends he is still upon his throne and he still be the sovereign lord of all when time shall be no more what a great and mighty god he is beyond comprehension and beyond description and that is his greatness and so you can measure his greatness by the fact in considering his position in all his creation and also thirdly you can measure his greatness by his character He is called holy and lives in an unapproachable light. His greatness is dis- described in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 24. Let me read it for you. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 24 says, Can anyone hide in secret places so that I cannot see him? declares the lord do not i fill heaven and earth declares the lord what a great god even heaven heaven of heavens cannot contain him that is another passage in the holy scriptures it is also described in first kings chapter 8 verse 27 But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. This is Solomon's prayer in the dedication of that temple. What a great God. Is it possible for us to relate ourselves to him? Is it possible for man come in contact with such a God who lives in an unapproachable light and glory? He is far removed from us in holiness and authority. He dwells in the high and lofty place. He is invisible, eternal, and immortal how do we relate to him how can we ever reach or know him when we consider all these descriptions his greatness his place in all his creations and his uh, 
is is character you consider all these you wonder if you will ever be able to relate to him how can we he is beyond description and beyond any comprehension oh my dear friend brothers and sisters my friends that's why some people foolishly say show me your god then i will believe how can you ever see this god whose glory shines brighter and more brilliant than the midday sun on a summer as a sun on a summer day sun for example when it shines with all its power how long can you keep looking at that sun without closing your eyes you cannot without damaging your eyes sight and yet the sun is one of the smallest creation of god and my friends if that is so how do you expect to see this mighty creator himself about whom the bible says he dwells in an unapproachable light let us accept god by faith for what he is and honor him and respect him and fear him and believe in him and trust him that our lives may be full god is calling but the question again remain how can we mortal being ever relate ourselves to this god tomorrow we shall consider that so come prepare tomorrow for the second part of this same message but today this is enough for you to know that you have a god who is beyond human understanding and yet he has revealed himself to you and to me when he sent his son jesus christ and jesus said he who has seen me has seen god the father so christ has come as a great revelation of this god. and so love him respect him fear him worship him serve him follow him for the day is coming when we shall be taken out of this world that we may be with him forever and ever then we shall know him we will ever be related to him never be separated from him Amen. This is our destiny. It is for this God has created us. Be grateful to him. And today is a wonderful day. Don't waste it. Don't misuse it. Enjoy it. For the glory of God. Father, I pray that everyone who listen this will continue to experience oh yes, your glory. and your greatness lord though we cannot see you by these eyes but we can still understand you by seeing you by the eyes of faith may our faith be enlightened so that the eye of our faith will reach you and know you Thank you for blessing your people in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you my friend. Have a very good day.